Chase Toyota Insider of the Memphis Tiger Network. I'm Jeff Frywell, alongside Richard Mulroney, our new head coach at the University of Memphis. And coach, I know that's got to be exciting for you. Very exciting. You know, it's an opportunity that I don't take lightly, and I'm just uh, thrilled to be in this spot and just going to try to do my best to continue to raise the, the foundation of this program. Richie Grant left a great foundation here, and the least I can do is just try to keep building it up and up with uh, more championships. I'm sure that was probably the last thing in your mind last year. You wanted to get into coaching at the collegiate level, come in as an assistant. Little did you think that probably in less than a calendar year you would be uh, in charge of the program. Yeah, I mean, I was just fortunate enough that Richie gave me a chance as an assistant. I, I learned a ton under him. Obviously, ta he taught me a lot last year. And, yeah, the last thing, like you said, was expecting to move into his spot. But I'm happy for him. He was able to find a good job out west. Uh, that fit him on and off the field and fortunately the university here thought I was a good fit for him and I've got big shoes to fill but at the same time I'm confident with it and uh, I've got coach uh, Robert Sossum as his assistant as an assistant mm -hmm. and uh, so far so good I I'm happy with the way things are going and uh, I'm, I'm excited about what the future holds. It's got to make you feel good as you mentioned that you do have a foundation a lot of times when you get a head coaching job it's because things are not going good and the coach has been let go Richie yeah, you know, you can be some somewhere nine or ten years, you know it's time to move on. He found a good job, like you said, out, out in California. So it's not like you're inheriting a program that won one or two games. They had a solid team last year. Absolutely. I mean, the players that he's left me, the, in terms of the money, the scholarship, we have a stadium being built in a mm -hmm. couple of years. I mean, the future is bright. And obviously he's left the program in a great shape. And I'm, I'm just hoping to continue that excellence and, and raise it to the next level. So by no means are we going to be struggling. It's going to be a competitive team. And uh, we're just counting the days till we start our fall season. Coach, we talked to you last year. Went really in-depth to your background. But briefly, you've got a major league uh, career. San Jose, Dallas, finished up your career at Houston, of course. Uh, you're a native of the city, so you're, you're kind of familiar with what, how things work around the, the city and the county and the, and the region in the Mid-South. So this is a good fit for you. It's been a great fit. You know, like I, I moved here with my family. It wasn't that I was trying to learn the highway system, didn't know where to put my kids in school. My wife, not that, that she wouldn't have friends. We had all those bases covered. Obviously, learning the new system of working at a university, getting familiar with the college kids. And there's, you know, there's little growing pains here or there, for, but for the most part, very comfortable being here and it's been a smooth transition one that I really it felt like I, I'd never even left for the 18 years that I was gone to be honest with you. You mentioned Robert Sauce when you're, you're moving him up as his assistant he worked with you and Rich and he's been with the program since he was a player how integral and how key is that to have an alumni that's, that's been a player recently that can relate to the players but also kind of has that distance and that maturity to be a coach? Huge piece. I mean once I found out that I was going to be given this spot I, talk, I talked to Robert he was the first person I talked to and said look we can't do this without you. You know, he obviously played here, bleeds Memphis blue, works in the, he's worked in the office for a couple years with Richie, knows how the, the little things that maybe I didn't necessarily even know, the ACS system, to the recruiting, to the NCAA rules. He's been my right-hand man, and rightfully so. I mean, he's done a wonderful job, and the kids respect him. He knows the guys that we've got. They see him not only as a former player, but as a coach now that knows the game. He understands the recruiting process. I mean, it's a great fit, and I, quite frankly, I don't know what I would have done if he didn't accept the job. So I'm, I'm thankful to have him and uh, looking forward to working with him for many, many more years. Interesting, a few of those things you mentioned. I'm sure you've got 100% confidence in your ability to go out there and do the X's <laughs> and O's and trains players, but there's so much more involved in being a head coach than going to practice and going to ball games, just from the administrative aspect of it. For sure. <laughs> you know, I reached out to a couple former players that were MLS players that are now head coaches at Washington and other different places. and. Every one of them said, look, the soccer piece is going to come easy, yeah. but you have to wear nine other hats. And it was a great suggestion. I mean, you have the, the school piece, you have mm -hmm. kids off the field, you have the family piece, you have you know, all those. And I'm willing to do it. I, it's a spot that I'm very comfortable with. Obviously, I, I played four years in college, and I, I would go four years again. I wouldn't leave early, and I was very thankful and happy with the way my four years, and I'm hoping to give that same opportunity to our student athletes. And so far, so good. I've really enjoyed it. And if I've got to wear 10 different hats, that's fine. But at the end of the day, I do like putting on my, my soccer hat oh. for a game at night. Oh, there's no doubt. You've, you've run through your first spring now. I had some, uh, some, some spring games, spring yes. practices. What are your thoughts so far on the spring? It was a solid spring. What I wanted to do, my main emphasis was giving guys many minutes. I needed to get a, a good, true evaluation of some guys that are in some spots in the fall, some guys that played different spots that I could see them filling for a Mark Sherrod that left, or a Liam Collins, or a Shane Keeley. We have a lot of spots to fill. I wanted to give those kids as many minutes as possible so I can make the right judgment call as to, yes, I see you playing there in the fall, or maybe not necessarily that spot, but another, but another spot. And uh, at the end of the day, I, I was able to make a big list of an evaluation and get that down. And going, into, and going into the fall now, I know exactly, 
for the most part, what I need to do, and in, including the freshmen coming in, I think we're going to have a solid squad, and it's given me a good evaluation of where we're going to be at. What are your thoughts on your first year as far as going into the fall? There'll be a little bit of a realignment into, into the league. You've got Tulsa, who's a top 25 program that was great in Conference USA. So the, even with the realignment, this, this conference, the American in soccer, is going to be very, very strong. It, I mean, I just saw it last fall. I mean, every game was competitive. I mean, we beat Cincinnati our first game of the year, and then I think they ended up beating Connecticut or Louisville one of the last games of the year. So at, on any given day, a team can turn around and pop somebody and, and beat them, even if you beat them. So every game's competitive. Um, I'm very confident with our squad, though. I think we're going to be competitive. We have Connecticut coming here. We went to their place, and they whopped us 3-0. So never, there's never revenge. But having said that, we learned a lot of lessons from that game, and I'm looking forward to them coming back to us now, along with many other games. I mean, you can't just focus on one squad. But we should be there in the thick of things. I mean, we'll have somewhat of a young squad because we lost a lot of minutes on the field. But like I said, this spring I, I was able to give a lot of minutes, and it's not necessarily in the spotlight minutes, but it's minutes on the field that they can start getting comfortable with each other, getting to know how each other plays. And like I said, with a mixture of the freshmen coming in, I, I like our chances. I think we'll be competitive, and I'm, I'm curious to see where we end up at the end of the year. And before we let you go, what, what is your vision as far as the style of play you want to play here at the University of Memphis? I mean, obviously you have to adjust to what you have on the field right now, but in the next few years, what kind of style, what kind of vision do you have? I like, I'm a possession type of player. I like to try to possess the ball, to wear the other team down a little bit. And I always tell the guys, you know, eventually the other team will break down. If you make about 5, 10, 15 passes, they're going to get a kink in your, their armor some way, and then we're just going to attack them straight off the bat. But it's a possession style. In some games, you're going to be able to do that. Others, you're not. So I've told the guys, look, whatever the other team gives you, that's what you take. But if we're able to possess the ball, build it up the field, and obviously with a cross or finish or a shot, shot on goal, I mean, that, you know soccer. You can have 30 chances in a game and not get any goals, or you can be on one shot and one goal. So it's just a matter of giving yourself as many possibilities and opportunities to score, and I think the way we're going to possess the ball, we'll, we'll get that uh, in, your, in due time. Coach, congratulations. We look forward to your career here. Thank you very much. That is Richard Mulroney. I'm Jeff Brightwell for the Wolf Chase Toyota Insider on the Tiger Network.